Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another online sociologicals. So, on my previous videos, I have already explained to you on uh, social class and ethnicity and how they influence educational attainment. So, now we will have an in depth overview on how gender and educational achievement are interrelated. So, when talking about gender and educational attainment, the focus is mainly on the extent to which females and males perform different in different subjects and their tendency to study different subjects given their choices. Donc, main focus pour uh, gender, c'est tout simplement qui fait est-ce que ben, male and female de performance différents quand nous cause par rapport à ben, différents sujets. Et aussi en termes de euh, choix de sujets, qui fait est-ce qu'il y a des garçons de choisir spécifiques subjects et des garçons de choisir spécifiques subjects? So, at first, sociologists' main focus was on female interachievement at every level of education system and the ways in which traditional ideas about the proper role of women in society prevented them from achieving their full potential. Donc, auparavant, when sociologues the main focus c'était sur female underachievement. Okay? Et aussi, comment est-ce que traditional female role peut empêcher ou achieve the full potential in terms of education. However, females have improved their educational performance during the 1980s and 1990s because educational opportunities open to females have never been greater. Okay? Dans les années 1980 à 1990, les années commencent, ben, commence remarque un genre de improvement in terms of educational performance parce que c'est une educational opportunities which were open to all females. So Wilkinson argued that this led to a gender quake in which fundamental changes in attitudes towards female role in society have been achieved. Okay, Wilkinson, the main focus is sur gender quake. C'est quoi gender quake? C'est tout simplement comment il arrive un certain changement par rapport à une diminution d'attitude en termes de une female role. Du moment où il commence à un changement par rapport à une diminution d'attitude towards female role, this has encouraged the uh, woman to work harder in terms of education. Okay? So gender quake, c'est tout simplement the traditional idea on woman's role in society which has changed and this has helped towards changes in terms of attitudes towards education also for women. So first explanation on girls' educational achievement is socialization factors. So according to Fiona Norman, most parents think the appropriate socialization for girls is to handle her very gently and to encourage her in relatively passive, quiet activities such as reading. Okay? Quand nous cause socialisation, c'est plutôt gender role socialization. Donc, Fiona Norman, il focus là, comment est-ce que les parents socialisent les filles et les garçons différemment? Okay? Quand nous cause en termes de socialisation de ben filles, ben parents encouragent ben TV plutôt que que des ben activités qui plient tranquille et passive, such as reading. Mais par contre, pour les garçons, c'est pas le cas. C'est plutôt outdoor activities, running and every physical activities for boys. Okay. So on the other hand, gender stereotype held by parents or also means that typical boys need more time to run around and play. As a result, parents are often dismiss dismissive if their boys get in trouble and they see this as them being typical boys. Donc, la façon dont les parents 
Et les besoins de nos enfants, surtout que des physical activities, running around, tout ça. Si à l'école, je te amène la même attitude, les là, in case they get into trouble, parents are going to be in denial because they think that it is the typical boy's attitude. Thus, these gender stereotypes and differences in gender socialization disadvantage boys and advantage girls in education. Donc, par rapport à the gender role socialization, ça va une activité ça va une activité qui nous encourage ben filles et ben garçons là. Donc, pour ben filles, il y a un avantage qui peut être de côté de l'éducation, mais pour ben garçons, c'est un désavantage qui pas pour être de par rapport à l'éducation pour après. Moreover, according to Sue Sharp, she found that long ago girls did not attach high priorities to education because their first four priorities were love, marriage, husband, and children. But nowadays, women no longer want to get married since they see men and marriage as a liability to their career. Donc, pour ce sharp, Lily t'y trouvait qu'il long ego basé l'eau sur l'étude. Long ego girls, main priorities, c'était pas l'étude, c'était pas l'éducation. Mais c'était surtout love, c'était surtout getting married, getting married, having children. But nowadays, girls' attitudes have changed, women's attitudes have changed. Okay, their main focus nowadays is getting a good qualification and also getting a good job. So they tend to see husband having a husband, getting a boyfriend or marriage as being a liability to them, being a, a barrier for their uh, career and education. So another explanation for girls' educational achievement is natural differences. So according to Francis and Skelton, Natural differences simply refers to differences in brain functions between boys and girls, which also explain differences in achievement. So based on a study done by scientists of Newcastle University, they found that girls' brain can be begin maturing from the age of 10 years. But some men have to wait until 20 years before the same organizational structures take place. Donc, en termes de natural differences, it has been proven that girls tend to become mature more earlier than boys. So this also tends to help in terms of their educational achievement. When we talk about maturity, c'est sûr que par rapport à les, uh, to the assessments, an examination. So if you're more mature, you're going to take examination in a more serious way. It is mostly the case for girls, but instead, boys will not uh, take examination as very serious and they will just be uh, joking around. Another sociological explanation for girls' educational achievement is the feminization of schooling is feminization of teaching. So this is the idea that there is not enough male teachers working in primary schools. Instead, in both primary and secondary schools, there has been, there has been a rise in teacher, female teachers, and this means girls increasingly have positive role models, as well as the curriculum Teaching styles and means of uh, assessment are more appropriate to the learning style of girls. So, when we're talking about feminization of schooling, c'est tout simplement feminization of teaching. Ça veut dire que teaching is being seen as a job which has been taken over mostly by females, meaning that at school we tend to have more female role model for girls instead of boys. So boys tend to be discouraged in the sense that they do not have positive role model at school. So another explanation is gender construction and interpretations, that is, teachers' expectations for boys and girls. The sociologists Swan and Gradle found that teachers tend to see boys as unruly and disruptive. So most of the time what happens is that before 
we start working with girls and boys, we automatically assume that boys are most likely to be disruptive, attention seeker, and always being in trouble, whereas girls tend to be more quiet, more hardworking, and bright students. Okay, so this is interpretation of teachers. So teachers have lower expectations of boys and are less inclined to push them hard to achieve high standards. According to John Abraham, not the actor, but the sociologist of London King's College, when he asked the teachers to describe a typical boy and a typical girl, the main description for a typical boy was not particular, particularly bright like student having uh, liking to have a laugh and always attention seeker so teachers tend to describe boys as being not being intelligent student always like to mess around and having a laugh and always being attention seeker in class Whereas a typical girl is a bright, well-behaved, hard-working girl. So all these interpretation, all these uh, gender construction on behalf of the teacher influence the educational achievement of boys mostly negatively and girls positively. Okay, so this normally is the explanation for why girls are overachieving in educational achievement today compared to boys okay so on this note we will focus on the for the next video we are going to focus on boys and underachievement